Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing rheumatoid arthritis and anti-rheumatoid drugs. Okay, right, so we've now discussed the NSAIDs, uh, the DMARDs, and the glucocorticoids. What we now want to turn our attention on to is the biopharmaceuticals. Okay, so biopharmaceuticals are uh, protein molecules, usually monoclonal antibodies, uh, that are used uh, to treat rheumatoid arthritis or to treat more widely other diseases. Okay, right. So I'm going to start off by uh, discussing monoclonal antibodies with you and what a monoclonal antibody uh, preparation actually is. Then what we'll do is discuss um, the difference between a chimeric and a humanized monoclonal antibody. Okay, then what we'll discuss is specific examples of biopharmaceuticals, and not all of them are going to be monoclonal antibodies, um, but most of them are going to be monoclonal antibodies. Okay, right, uh, so let me start off by discussing uh, what a monoclonal antibody versus a polyclonal antibody preparation is. Okay, so basically, the concepts of monoclonal and polyclonal do not apply to an individual antibody molecule, and I think that's why people struggle with these concepts, because they try and apply them to individual antibody molecules, and you can't. Okay, it's nothing to do with an individual antibody molecule. Monoclonal and polyclonal apply to an entire preparation containing loads of antibody molecules. Okay, so they apply to a mixture Okay, so here's a bucket uh, containing a fluid with loads and loads of different antibody molecules in. Okay, so uh, basically polyclonal and monoclonal, monoclonal rather, I said monoclonal there, Moni monoclonal uh, apply to this preparation containing loads of antibody molecules. There are adjectives which you can apply to this preparation. Okay, so Let's say you wanted to produce antibodies against a certain protein, okay, and we'll call this protein protein A here, just for protein arbitrary, okay? So you want to produce antibody molecules against protein A. One way that you could do that is you could take an experimental animal, so maybe a mouse, that's the usual thing that we do this in, okay? And then you could inject the protein A, which might be a human protein, into the mouse, Okay, and then of course the mouse will initiate an adaptive immune response against protein A, and then if you wait long enough, you'll find that antibodies against protein A are going to appear in the mouse's blood. Okay, so you could take a sample of the mouse's blood and you would now have a mixture uh, containing lots of antibodies against protein A. That would be an example of a polyclonal preparation of anti-protein A antibodies. Okay, because you would contain, this mixture would contain uh, loads of different antibody molecules. Antibody molecules which have very different variable regions, basically. Okay, and this is because when you inject protein A into the mouse, you're going to get loads of adaptive immune responses being initiated against loads of the different epitopes of protein A, okay? So you're not just going to go for one epitope of protein A. Loads of the different epitopes of protein A are all going to get adaptive immune responses initiated against them, okay? And that means that you're going to end up with this mixture containing loads of different antibody molecules that all have different antigen binding regions, okay? And these different antigen binding regions are going to bind to different epitopes on protein A. So that's the concept of a polyclonal antibody preparation, a mixture of loads of antibody molecules which all have different antigen binding portions, okay? And therefore bind to different epitopes of protein A. A monoclonal preparation of antibodies, on the other hand, would refer to a mixture of antibody molecules against protein A where they all have identical uh, antigen binding portions. Okay, so they're all made by the same B cell clone, basically. Okay, and they're all going to bind to a, a specific epitope, protein A. Okay, so that's what the difference between polyclonal and monoclonal is. Clearly, monoclonal antibodies are a lot more difficult to make than polyclonal antibodies. Polyclonal antibodies, as I say, you can just collect blood uh, from an animal that's been immunized with protein A. Okay, monoclonal antibodies, what you have to do is isolate 
uh, a B cell uh, that produces an antibody against a certain epitope of protein A, then you have to modify it slightly, grow it on and produce loads of these cells, okay, and then they are going to produce uh, the anti-protein A antibody and that then, the preparation they produce will be a monoclonal antibody. Okay, right. So monoclonal antibody is a new thing in pharmacology, okay, uh, because you can build them against whatever protein you like and whatever epitope of that protein you like, okay, and uh, they are growing, okay, we are using them more and more as drugs, basically, because we can design them to target a specific part of a certain protein, okay, and that is incredibly powerful and incredibly useful. Okay, so, uh, we are now going to see loads of examples of monoclonal antibodies which bind to and neutralize loads of those pro-inflammatory cytokines which are involved in rheumatoid arthritis, basically. Uh, so, tumor necrosis factor alpha being the principal one that we have got a huge number of different monoclonal antibodies that bind to certain epitopes of tumor necrosis factor alpha. Okay, now, before we go on to the specific examples, I just want to cover a bit more theory, okay? So I want to tell you about what the difference between a chimeric monoclonal antibody and a uh, humanized monoclonal antibody is. Okay, now this, these adjectives, they actually do refer to the individual molecules that are in your monoclonal preparation of antibodies. Okay, so we understand what monoclonal means now. Now we're going on to chimeric and humanized. Okay, so we want to use monoclonal antibodies to revolutionize pharmacology. We want to be able to inject the, this monoclonal antibody preparation into a patient. Okay, now what's the problem with doing that? Well, at the moment, where are we getting these monoclonal antibodies from? We're getting them from B cells that we got out of animals, okay? So they will be producing animal antibodies against the human protein, okay? If we now inject animal antibodies into a human's bloodstream, what is going to happen? The human is going to initiate an adaptive immune response against the drug molecule, basically, these foreign antibody proteins, okay? So we can't do that, basically. It would be a disaster. Okay, so instead what we have to do is we have to further modify the monoclonal antibody preparation molecules, basically, okay, to make it so that they don't initiate an adaptive immune response in the human when we inject them in. Okay, so let me draw the picture of an antibody molecule again. Okay, and I'll draw it bigger this time. So here are those two heavy chains again, okay, and uh, here are the two light chains. Now, remember there is a portion that is specific for antibody molecules. Each antibody molecule is going to have a different one of these if it's produced by different B cells, okay? That's known as the variable region. We are assuming in our monoclonal antibody preparation that the variable region is the same for all of our uh, antibody molecules, okay? Uh, right. Uh, so that's the portion that actually binds to the certain epitope of protein A. Then, under that, there is this constant region that is not involved in binding uh, to the certain epitope of protein A. So we want to try and make this antibody molecule more human so that it doesn't initiate an adaptive immune response in the human when we inject it into the human. Okay, so which bit are we going to change? Okay, are we going to change the variable region, which is the bit that binds to uh, the protein A, which we want to target, or are we going to change the constant region? Well, of course, we're going to change the constant region. So basically, in a chimeric monoclonal antibody preparation, what you have done to the antibody molecules is you have taken out this constant region here from the mouse antibody molecules. You've kept the variable regions from the mouse uh, antibody molecules, and then you have reattached them to a human constant portion, basically. Okay, so you have engineered these antibody molecules so that the constant portion is human and then uh, the variable regions are from these mouse uh, antibody molecules that bind to the certain epitope of protein A. Okay, now that doesn't initiate the adaptive immune response uh, when you put it into a human. Bravo! The problem is it still gets removed 
quicker than we would like, basically. It's removed from the human's body too quickly, basically. Okay? So, we want to try and make it even more human, because human antibodies, true human antibodies, stay in the blood for quite a long time. Their half-life is not trivial. Okay? So, we'd like uh, our monoclonal antibodies to stay in the blood for a long time, so that we don't have to give it that often. Okay? Because, after all, it does have to be given by intravenous injection. Okay? So, we'd like it to have a long half-life. So, how do we do this? Uh, well, um, we further humanize it, basically. We make it even more humanized. So, this is a chimeric monoclonal antibody, and you can tell when monoclonal antibody preparations are chimeric uh, or humanized, and I should have said this earlier. Basically, the chimeric uh, monoclonal antibody preparations that are used clinically have the suffix imab. Mab is for monoclonal antibody. The I tells you that it's a chimeric monoclonal antibody. The humanized ones have the suffix umab. Okay, so that's when you're looking at the name of a monoclonal antibody therapy, how you can tell whether it's chimeric monoclonal antibody or a humanized monoclonal antibody. So humanized monoclonal antibodies, we are going to go even further. Okay. Basically, we are going to creep into the variable region and start changing bits of the variable region to make it even more human. Now, how can we get away with doing that? Because the variable region is the bit we need. That's the bit that's specific for binding to protein A. Okay, that's the bit that we had to have from the mouse monoclonal antibody in order for this to even work. However, the way, reason we can do this is that actually not all of the variable region actually does bind to protein A. It's only the very tip portion of the variable region that actually does bind to that specific epitope of protein A. And this portion of the variable region is known as the hyper variable region because it hugely varies between antibody molecules that are targeting different antigen epitopes. Okay? So, the idea here is that actually we only need to keep this bit of our mouse monoclonal antibody, the two hypervariable regions, they're the bits which need to stay, okay? The rest of the antibody molecule can be replaced with an entirely human portion, okay? Including this portion of the variable region that is uh, not the hypervariable region. Okay, so in humanized monoclonal antibodies, we go a step further and we replace all of this bit here with a human version, basically, and this bit here, okay, and only keep the hypervariable portion from the original mouse monoclonal antibody, because that's the portion that we need in order to bind to that specific epitope of protein A, okay, so that's what the difference between a chimeric monoclonal antibody and a humanized monoclonal antibody is, um, and humanized monoclonal antibodies, they stay in the blood for longer, that's the advantage. Being more human, they don't get excreted from the uh, blood as quickly as the chimeric ones do. Okay, so that's their advantage over the chimeric ones. Neither of these initiate uh, the immune response, so they don't cause immune rejection. Right, okay, so, armed with this understanding of monoclonal antibodies then, let's now talk about some biopharmaceuticals. Okay, so we're going to start off by discussing anti-TNF-alpha therapy. Okay, and basically this is exactly what it says on the label, okay? This is molecules, biopharmaceutical molecules, which are capable of neutralizing tumor necrosis factor alpha molecules. They're capable of binding to TNF alpha molecules and uh, neutralizing them, basically, so that the TNF alpha can no longer have any effect on uh, cells, basically. Okay, and TNF alpha we know is absolutely crucial to the pathology of rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, it's one of those primary cytokines. It's what maintains the chronic inflammation in the joints. It drives the destruction of the joint. Okay, so if we can neutralize this molecule, that would uh, be hugely beneficial for uh, rheumatoid arthritis patients. Okay, so, there are loads of examples of monoclonal antibodies which target certain epitopes of tumor necrosis factor alpha. Okay, so let me give you some examples of these. So, a very famous one is a drug called adalimumab, okay, uh, which is an example of a humanized monoclonal antibody and therefore has uh, the umab suffix. 
okay? Uh, another example of an anti-TNF-alpha monoclonal antibody, and again, I'll stress the point that these will be targeting different epitopes of the TNF-alpha, okay, is infliximab, okay, and this one you will notice has the suffix imab, and therefore it must be a chimeric monoclonal antibody. Some other examples are sertolizumab, okay, so sertolizumab, Okay, another example of a humanized monoclonal antibody. And finally, another example is galimumab. Okay, so there's four examples of monoclonal antibodies, three humanized, one chimeric, uh, which target tumor necrosis factor alpha. They neutralize TNF-alpha molecules and stop the TNF-alpha from driving the pathology of rheumatoid arthritis, and they are incredibly effective. And I should have said right at the start when we are discussing biopharmaceuticals that these are very powerful. They are very powerful. They do work better than the DMARTs. Okay, the thing is, they are incredibly expensive, and you can probably understand why they are incredibly expensive. Now, I've described to you how they're made, okay? And therefore, they are the second-line drugs for rheumatoid arthritis because they are so expensive. DMARDs are tried first, and if they don't work, then we try the biopharmaceuticals. Okay, so those are all examples of monoclonal antibodies targeting tumor necrosis factor alpha.